My name is Tosin Omolaja, and you're welcome to NAFDAQ and your else, where we bring you all the important information you need to know about NAFDAQ, the agency saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding our health by ensuring that the foods, drugs, cosmetics, and medical equipment made available to us are safe and wholesome. On the program today, we continue our expose on NAFDAQ's enforcement drive to ensure that whatever you and I buy in our markets, whether food or drugs or any other regulated products, are safe for consumption. If there is no enforcement, there will not be a regulatory agency because a regulatory agency is supposed to enforce or to control, of course, uh, the regulatory activities and to enforce, to ensure that people do not violate the regulations. Therefore, enforcement is extremely important. Enforcement cannot happen just within NAVDAQ. There is a lot of collaboration with Customs, with EFCC, with Interpol, with FBI, meaning it has now gotten across or go, you know, gone across uh, from our country to another country. So enforcement is extremely important. Uh, I will give an example of enforcement activities. It's not just the enforcement directorate that does that. Pharmacovigilance, post-marketing, surveillance also can seize products. If they're resistant, they call enforcement. Any, uh, uh, any of the inspectorate, directorate, food, safety, uh, drug evaluation and research, they can put on hold and then they can evacuate if their resistance enforcement comes, comes in. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, dynamics in terms of what happens on, you know, every day. Last week on NAFDAQ and Your Health, we brought you highlights of the agency's enforcement activity at the BBA Markets Trade Fair, Lagos, where regulatory officers raided the markets of sellers of adulterated and expired cereal products. Who dispensed these food products in small quantities, exposed to the atmosphere in ways that destroys the wholesomeness of the products? Yes, uh, the statutory mandate of uh, the agency is the protection of consumers by ensuring that wholesome, safe, efficacious products of good quality are manufactured distributed, advertised, sold, imported and exported. It goes without saying that in order to carry out these activities, we must be on top of what we do. When we got a report that people were selling all manners of product mixed dangerously, in the marketplace, we decided to send our men. And we have our men on the field, even as I speak. So we got there, we got information, and we started thinking of how to track them, and we're able to do that. You find that the Federal Tax Force on Counterfeit and Fake Drugs and on Wholesome Processed Foods, which is domiciled in NAVDAQ, has offices in Kaduna, which takes care of the north, you have the one in Asaba, which takes care of the south-south zone of the country as well as the southeast. Why the headquarters is in Lagos? Because of the commercial nature of Lagos, it covers the whole of the southwest and Lagos more particularly. When we got this report of people mixing all kinds of cereals, as well as oat, and dishing it out in the marketplace, we decided to go after them. Right now, 
we've been able to make an inroad. But we are not done yet because the exercise is ongoing. The exercise is ongoing. And we continue to go after these people because they are killing our people. We keep saying this. That is why NAVDAC, when they tell you NAVDAC safeguards the health of the people, it's not just mere talk. We walk the talk at NAVDAC. We go out there to make sure that these people don't profit from killing our people. Enough is enough. How can you have some of these series that are expired? They mix them up with the ones that we don't know where they, they made them. They mix them up, what I, we would call a jekuje. They mix everything up and people eat because of the greed of some people. Some people want to profit from other people dying. We cannot allow that. We cannot. The task of safeguarding the health of the nation is a collective responsibility for all citizens. So when well-meaning citizens who, in response to NAFDAQ's clarion call, alerted the agency about these nefarious activities, NAFDAQ sprung to action. We were, we were inundated with a lot of complaints from the public that people are selling things in open places, markets, things that should be sold in uh, these things that should not be sold in those places, as in, in the way they are selling them. And so we started, invest we started get gathering information, uh, sending people out to actually confirm the veracity of the allegations. And we saw uh, the investigation took us a, long, a, a lot of time to get to where we were. Uh, we're compiling, we were profiling, and we were trying to, we were trying to understand why this actually is happening. We got some major hubs where we saw people were doing it and we sent people there to investigate and find out. And we discovered that this is, the public outcry is true. What they were saying is true. And so we have to also go for that to now know who are the major people involved in this. So we have to profile and we have to move around to get around the main people who are in charge of distribution and sending it all over the country. And so this is how we started the investigation. Some of the distributors and perpetrators of these heinous acts use online platforms and social media to promote and market their adulterated products. Uh, you know, we carry out a lot of online monitoring. We carry out a lot of online monitoring to, to have feelings of what people sell online because that is the internet now. People are more online to sell their products. So in the course of our online monitoring, we found out that uh, there is this uh, boom. There is boom of uh, sale, online sale of these products, these brands of this uh, class of products, Siri products, conflicts, oats, and that and products in that class. And these products actually are consumed mainly by uh, children. Are consumed mainly by children. So what uh, we did was that we were able to uh, track them, and one of them, one of the place, one of the sellers we tracked, happened to be in the east. When we started, we didn't know. We even thought it was in Lagos, but we were able to track the person to east, to the east, and in Onitsha. So when we got to the place, we were able to arrest the culprit and evacuated the products and brought the person for further interrogation and investigation. Preliminary investigations reveal that this trade has become quite organized, but with the sole intent of obscuring the true nature of the products and with abject disregard for health and hygiene. The investigation is still going on heavily on this, in all of this. We still have a lot of things we want to put some light on. But I will tell you that those jumbo bags you saw are not the way those things are imported. That's not the way they came. Like you saw on the field, you, you see that people were removing those things from primary packets and putting them in those bags and sealing those bags. That's one of the things we took from those places. You, we saw sealing machines and all of that. 
uh, repackaging. It's just, just, just something like you are redoing what somebody has done a final product on, I mean, a final packaging on. People are redoing it. Uh, the area where one of the major concerns we have is that where this repackaging, I'll call it food fraud, is a, a fraud actually is going on. Now, where this repackaging is taking place, they are very unhygienic places. You see that the places you went to, that you followed us, you see that they are in the market, open market. There's no way you want to pack food that people will eat that has been already in final packaged uh, stuff, not raw materials. And then you begin to repack it. That some of these people are not even learned. So I, we interview some of them. They don't even know anything about contamination. They don't know anything about, and they don't even know anything about hygiene. They don't, they don't observe any protocol to get these things missed and all of that. And they are jeopardizing the health of a lot of people who are going to consume this because in the process of doing that, they are introducing a lot of bacteria, a lot of microbial organism into this product that people will consume finally without any fine, without any other refining or anything doing. People will take this in things directly. So the environment is filthy. Many of them, you, you can see filthy environments, the way they, the way the old area dirty and all of that. But I think it's a trade. It, our investigation is showing, pointing towards the direction that it's a trade that people are beginning to learn and there should be, we will see are going to do more investigation because we are, we are see, we are see discovering more things happening in that area, but it's full fraud going on. A preliminary investigation shows that most of the products that are used for this rebagging business are either expired or almost expired products. And they are packed without date markings, without anything, and given to people to, to, to take. Uh, I'm also afraid for our consumers. Now that I've done a lot of enlightenment about checking what you buy, how will you buy a product in a linen sack, measured in cup for you, you don't know no manufacture date, no expiry date, no batch number. So that means if anything should go wrong with that product, we can't trace. We don't know where it's, we don't know who is the manufacturer. We don't know who is the, who, which batch it was producing. We don't know whether it has expired or not. And then you have a lot of untraceable things. You know, and people will be falling sick and all of that. Uh, is, is it, that's why I say it's food fraud going on. NAFTAC and your else will be right back. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. If you are just joining in, you're watching NAFTAC and your health. Unfortunately, the vast majority of those who will consume these products are children. These ultimately will impede their health, put their parents in more financial hardship, and indeed put a strain on the country's health system. To know that most of these things are serious. My own children, do, they, they don't eat anything in the morning other than cereals. I don't know how many pack of this I buy. I'm talking to about myself personally. Every month. Now, you look at millions of children in, the, in this country taking this product. I understand that people want to look at cheap, cheaper alternatives. Okay, how do we? Because people, a lot of people will tell us because part of the people who investigate will say uh, uh, things are expensive, so they want in measures that they can, people can use. And I want to say no. I can see some of the packs by the manufacturer coming in as much as 50 naira, small packs. So there is, there is more to it. So if you want to get it to people at the price that is affordable, the, the manufacturers also have done something to make these things very affordable and easy to people. So, there's more to it, and our major particular focus is that 90% of people who consume this are children. Taking cereals, Cocoa Pops, and all, and all these products, and then you contaminate these things for them, then you begin to talk of different kind of diseases and all of that for children, and you don't know which source, where it's coming from. The health uh, problem of uh, not 
taking or consuming the ones that are in the original packaging of the manufacturer is much. Uh, it's been reported that uh, in Nigeria about 1.5 million cases of food poisoning happens every year in Nigeria. Uh, well, with the trend of what is happening, I'm sure it's going to overshoot that because that the class of products we are talking about are being consumed by children and uh, it's one of their basic food they eat. These products are actually exposed. They are not in the original packaging, so they are exposed to both dust, they are exposed to bacteria uh, in the environment, they are exposed to viruses, they are exposed to protozoa infections. And also the toxins of these organisms are deposited on these food products. And uh, the consumer, in consuming it, will definitely come down with food poisoning. And we know the implication of food poisoning. It says a lot of uh, health challenges comes with it. Many people who have patronized these adulterated food dispensaries ignorantly believe they are buying the proper cereals produced by registered manufacturers and argue that since rice, beans, and gari can be dispensed, why not cereal products? This is a very dangerous assumption. Looking at the product, there is a lot of people, our consumers should be enlightened and they should know that this is different from going to the market to buy products like gari, like rice, like beans that are measured. Those ones, you need to do some finishing, you need to do some cooking, those ones are raw materials. These ones are finished products. These ones have been, some things have been added, some vitamins, minerals have been added to these products. And some of these vitamins and minerals are very sensitive. You do not open, that's why they are, some of them are in this kind of seal they are in. And so when you open them and you remove them from that seal and you transfer them to an unhygienic seal by any rubber, any nylon, anywhere, and you are transferring. Number one, the first thing that you should note is that you can, we, the agency cannot attest to the fact that that rubber, that line on, that anybody bought anywhere in the market, is hygienic enough to take food that anybody is going to eat directly. That's the first thing. Now the second thing that the public should note also is that what you are buying in measured these things are manufactured products, not raw materials. So they must have a batch number. They must have date markings. Most of the things that we have found that they are using for this are expired products, rejected products, almost expired products. And they do this to conceal the identity of these products so that people can buy it and see consume. Number one, when you eat expired product already, all the nutrients inside it are they are almost gone. Two, there are a lot of chemical reactions that could have happened inside the product at that time because it's already expired. The, 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 expired, the essence of expired product expiration on products is to say that after this time, we can no longer guarantee the safety of this product. That's why manufacturers put it there. And so when people now pack products that have already expired and they are now reselling to you, apart from not being hygienic, you might actually, you might actually be taking poison. That's the truth. You might actually be taking poison. And a lot of people who are taking these are children. Children who cannot talk, who cannot explain themselves, who cannot, who cannot even trace where the source of the problem is coming from. And the end result is that we have a lot of healthcare issues, people going to the hospital for no reasons, children getting sick, and parents not knowing the source of the sickness, even adults. The laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria prohibit the falsification and adulteration of food and other consumer products, 
and NAFDAQ, as the agency of government, saddled with this responsibility, will not rest on its oars, but continue to clamp down on defaulters anywhere they may be, whether in our markets, streets, and even online. The Food and Drugs Act, CAP, F32, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, uh, 2004 is also reported in also the comp the new uh, the the new compilation which is 2010, as well as you have the counterfeit and fake gross and unwholesome processed foods miscellaneous provisions uh, act cap C 34, and also the miscellaneous offences act when you adulterate food as well as drugs, it's an offense. It's a very serious offense. So we are trying to get to the bottom of this. We are going to the mastermind, the source of it. These are the people, and it is nationwide. It's not just only, we, in this particular uh, exercise, we started from the south, south, southeast. More particular, south, south, southeast. We started from there. We were able to get a whole lot of them here. You also have some of them in the federal capital as well. We are going after them. You have them in the south as well as in the north. It's all over the country. So we have started the move. And we are using this medium to appeal to members of the public not to patronize these people. They should not buy uh, cereals and oats and some of these products when they scoop them from the basin or from whatever container, and they put it in disposable packs and the rest. They are not meant to be served that way. People should stay clear, and let us not purchase these products on the street, because we have some of these street vendors as well. On the road, when there is, a, when there is gridlock or traffic, you find people, because they are hungry or they are thirsty, they want to take water, they want to take this mineral. We don't know where those products are coming from. That's our package for today. Please join us, same time, same station, next week for a fresh edition. In the meantime, if you have comments, complaints, or you want to report activities of fake drugs or adulterated food product peddlers, our doors are always open. You can reach NAFTA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. You may also email NAFTA at nafta.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the reforms unit via email reforms at nafdac.gov.ng or call the reforms hotlines on 0909 763 0506 or 0909 763 0507. NAFDAC, customer focused, agency minded. COVID-19 is real. Please ensure you and your family follow safety measures as outlined by the NCDC. Stay away from crowded places as much as possible. And if you must be out there, please wear a face mask. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water and ensure you use only NAFDAQ approved alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Taking the NAFDAQ approved COVID-19 vaccine is safe. It's our best bet of stamping out the deadly coronavirus. And don't forget to download the Med Safety app from iOS or Play Store to report any adverse reaction from the vaccine or any other medicine at all. See you next week. Stay safe.